Okay, so the very first thing we need to do is we're going to start to write, create, a, create our project. That means we're going to write a lot of code. Uh, we want to keep all of our code together in a project folder. So the first thing you want to do on your flash drive, however you want to organize yourself on your flash drive, we need to create a folder for our project. On my flash drive, I've got folders for the different classes that I teach. So you probably have different folders on your flash drive for the different classes you're enrolled. In my uh, flash drive, I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to call it CBDB and today's date. 2018, 619. Again, you can call it whatever you want, but I would recommend to call it something like this. The name of the project, the date. And the date is in this reverse order of the year, the month, and then the day. Um, I grew up, uh, like many of us perhaps in the US, uh, writing the dates as 06-19-18. And you can continue to do that. But the problem with that is that when you have a bunch of folders, this alphabetization doesn't work. Because if I have more folders and I have a, if I have a September folder, it's going to be 09 uh, 18 but the organization in alphabetical order, the computer is going to organize 06, 07, 08, 09, 12, and then January. But it's not going to organize by year, because year is the last digit. If you save your folders with the year first, then all of the organization alphabetically will work. Every project from 2018 will be grouped together, because 2018 comes first then all of them from the month and then the day. So of course, save this however you want. You can spell it out, June 19, 2018, fine. But for alphabetization purposes, this is a more efficient way. Because every time we come into the class, I'm going to recommend that we uh, work on a copy of our work. Every time we come in, I'm going to make a copy of the folder with a new date. And I'll explain why more next time, but that'll be a way to have backups of our code in case I mess up and I need to go back to an older version of the code. That's another thing to think about. Are you backing up your code? If you've got all of your code saved on this USB drive and then you drop it in the lake when you went on vacation, your code is gone. If you're making backups in folders, if you're saving it on Dropbox, if you're saving it on your desktop as well as an external hard drive that you plug in, if you're saving your code on GitHub, you have places where you're backing up your code in case of catastrophe. And uh, you won't care about it until it happens to you. So I've got a folder with today's date. Go ahead and start Notepad++. Start menu, Notepad++. We're going to create a brand new file. Save as. We're going to save that into the folder we just created. We're going to save it as index.html. Make sure, just to be safe, make sure you put .html and save as type HTML. For a few people last time, uh, it didn't uh, it didn't show your color coding because it didn't know the language. Uh, you didn't say save as type HTML. We're going to call this index HTML. That is the common standard uh, home screen file of a website or app. It's the very first uh, screen that appears in our app. Index HTML. Save that. We start with a blank document, which we will do what we've done before, creating a very simple HTML skeleton. We won't need to do this very many times. Probably just this is the this is the last time we're gonna start with a blank empty document. Basically, we're gonna write these ten lines of code, which will be our very basic starting point. Mm -hmm. 
for our CBDB app. So rather, let's start with that 10 lines of code, basic structure. We've seen the doc type a few times before. We need HTML slash HTML, head to head, body to body, meta car set, title of the project, heading one. I'm done, are you? Okay, I'll give a couple more seconds. <clears throat> Quick reminder about signing in. Remember, you should sign in legibly so I know who to give the hours to. There's at least a couple of names that are a little too artistic for me to read. Number 24, for example. Uh, you want to confirm that your name is legible so I can put your hours in our official roster. So check that at some point. Nope, uh, seating is optional. You sit wherever you'd like, and then this number, you just, wherever you end up landing, just put your name. <coughs> okay, so last time we used jQuery Mobile to create our interface. We're still going to do that. Uh, jQuery Mobile, I think, is a very good um, framework to use to create these interfaces to create these widgets for side panels and menu bars and such. Last time when we used jQuery Mobile, however, we connected to the jQuery Mobile libraries on the server. We connected to the jQuery, uh, to the jQuery Mobile JS and CSS files on the internet. Now the problem with that is that eventually when this becomes a real app, what if a person is out of Wi-Fi range? What if they're out of cell tower range? What if they have their airplane mode turned on? Well, the problem is that they cannot then access those libraries on the internet. And our app suffers because the libraries are not accessible. So then our interface, you saw what happens when I turned off. We finished our app. I turned off the jQuery mobile files, and everything went blank, black and white plain. So, a better thing that we will do is we will download and make those jQuery mobile files part of our project. I'm going to show you together we're going to download those libraries and put them into our project folder so that they exist in our project folder and therefore we won't need to have an internet connection for our app to function. All the supporting files will be within the project folder. To download those files, go ahead and go to the internet and we'll go to jQuerymobile.com. We saw it at jQuerymobile.com. We can go check out the demos of the different widgets. We can read the details of all of the documentation, uh, look at creating themes and such. Importantly, we can download over here download. So this says we need jQuery this says we're gonna get jQuery mobile version 145 and we need jQuery 1.8 or up to 1.11 or 2.1 so in order for this to work we need the jQuery mobile file as well as the jQuery file and I'll come back to the difference of those in a moment for now go ahead and click on let's get the latest stable version of the code. Click that. If you're in Firefox, it might pop up. Would you like to save this or open it? You want to save it. I'm in Chrome. It simply started to download. If you're in Internet Explorer, a bar appears at the bottom here that asks you, would you like to save it or open it? You want to save it. So you're going to get a, a zip file. Out of that zip file, we're, we're going to extract three or four files and put them into our project folder. So in my case, my zip file downloaded. I'm going to open the zip file. The zip file has a variety of versions of jQuery Mobile for various tasks. Um, we have a version that is very minimal if we want to um, you know, create our own custom code. We have the full version. Um, 
for us what we want, if you look inside of that zip folder, we want the last three files. We want to copy these files from the zip file into our CVDV folder. We want jQuery Mobile 145.min.css, jQuery Mobile 145.min.js, jQuery Mobile 145.min.map. There's other versions over here. We don't want those. We want these last three ones right here. Copy those three or move them or extract them however you want to do it, however you know how to do it, into your CBDB project file. My CBDB project file has my index, and now it's got those three files. Anyone having a little trouble getting that? So previously, we had connected to the JS file on the internet and the CSS file on the internet. Now we have an extra file, a map file, which I'll cover later. We need one more thing. Do you notice inside of, the, inside of that zip file, we also have images. We need that images folder in our CBDB project. That's got the images of the icons of the home icon, the mail icon, all of those icons that we saw last time, they're in that folder. So copy that folder into our project folder. That'll take a little moment because there's several of them. So I've got the index file, which is going to be the file that displays all of the screens of our app. The home screen, the welcome screen, the save screen, the logout screen, all of those screens will be an index. We've got the CSS file, which is basically in charge of the fonts and the colors of jQuery Mobile. We've got the JS file that's in charge of the interactivity of how jQuery works, the animation, um, the uh, interactivity. <coughs> We've got the map file, which don't worry about it at the moment, but it's related to the JS file. And then we've got the images folder, which is all of the images that jQuery Mobile uses jQuery Mobile lives or uses jQuery. It lives on top of jQuery. jQuery is often the foundation of many web projects, many apps. There's jQuery Mobile, then on top of it we build other things, such as uh, there's jQuery down in the foundation, and then there's jQuery Mobile on top of it. So we also need the jQuery library. If you saw on the website, it said, Okay, we're going to download the latest version of jQuery Mobile, and you should also have jQuery 1.8.9.10.11 or 2.1. We also want a copy of jQuery. We can get it right over here. At the top left corner, we're currently on the jQuery Mobile website. And if you click on that first icon, that's the jQuery website. That's all part of the same family, the jQuery site, jQuery.com their slogan, right, less, do more. So if you've never used jQuery, we're going to use it extensively, which is a way to sort of write shortcuts. Instead of writing a, a command in JavaScript, in plain old JavaScript, which might be, you know, 20 characters long, we can write a jQuery equivalent one that's like seven characters. Same command, shorthand, for the longer version of the plain old JavaScript. And we get extra features the uh, abilities to do animations and other cool things a lot easier instead of the plain old JavaScript. From this screen, I see that, okay, download version 3.3.1. But we don't want that version. jQuery Mobile works best when it says here, version 1.8 or 2.1. So we're going to download the version that it asks for. Click on the download jQuery. And then here again it says, okay, download the latest one, but we don't want the latest one. I'm going to scroll down all the way to the bottom. For the past releases at the jQuery CDN, at the jQuery website, we're going to go get version 2.1. Click on that.
Okay, so we've got the 3x family, the 2x family, the 1x family. Uh, very brief history here, jQuery was invented and then it got branched out into two versions, 1.x, 2.x. And the idea was that 1.x was designed to also work with really old web browsers, like Internet Explorer version 6, Firefox version 2, and jQuery 2x branch was going to work with the newer browsers, Chrome, Safari, whatever. Then they got the idea, okay, well, now we're going to merge them back into a 1, version 3. So it's confusing about why are there three versions. So we want version 2x, but not 2.24. We need 2.1. So we have furthermore here, see all versions. We're going to get the version that we need in here. See all versions. Scrolling down into the 2x branch, we have right here, 2.1.1. Uh, actually, 2.1.0, that's the one we need. So we want jQuery 2.1.0, we have uncompressed, we have minified. We want the minified version, that's the one that's been compressed. It's, it, it's more efficient. It's not human readable, but that doesn't matter. We're not ever going to need to edit these libraries, we just need to use them. So um, I think you need to right click and then you do save file or save link. If you just click it, I think it's just going to show you the, it's just going to show you that message or the or the raw code. You want to uh, right click and save the file. It should be then letting you download jQuery 2.1.0.min.js. Save that into your project folder. So this is what we should have here. In your CVDB project folder, you've got the index file, images folder, jQuery mobile.css.js.map, and then also jQuery 2.1.0.min.js. So that's what we need to have here before we go on. Everyone got that? Anyone need a little help? Once we've got that, we can get back into Notepad++ and then connect these files in the HTML file to start using them. So once I've got them all set up like that, I'll go back to Notepad. I'm going to go into here about the head section, line 6. Remember last time we set up our mobile-friendly meta tag and then our style sheet. So we'll start this meta tag here. Meta name equal to something. Content equal to something else. So again, we've got a tag. We've got attributes. Name attribute, content attribute. Your name is going to be viewport. And remember, under content, we did user scalable and all that stuff. So we'll do that again, like last time. Viewport. Initial scale equal to 1. User scalable equal to no. And width equal to device dash width. So we wrote this last time in order to create a mobile friendly viewport, a um, an interface that will grow and shrink to be to the right size of the of the screen. 
on the next line, then we connect to the CS CSS file. This time, thankfully, the link to that CSS file will be a lot shorter. Last time we had to type HTTP colon slash slash code.jquery.com slash mobile slash blah 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 blah. Well, now we just need to type the name of the file, which is in our current folder. So next line, we're going to create a link tag with an attribute of rel and href. The relationship from this file with this file to the other file is right here. Rel. What was our rel last time? Style sheet. One word. Href. Now we need we need to simply type the name of the file because it's in the same folder. The index.html file is in the same folder as the jQuery mobile CSS file. So we just type its file name, not the whole path. And I'm just going to copy its file name here instead of typing it and misspelling it. jQuery.mobile-1.4.5.min.css. We don't need that other server path because it's not on the internet anymore. We're referencing our CSS file in our project folder. The second two lines were that we needed to then reference the jQuery library and the jQuery mobile libraries of JavaScript. And we did that by adding it before the end of body. Line 11 or so, we're going to have script, which has a pair. But then it has a source, src. We're going to connect first in the order jQuery. We're going to connect to the basic jQuery library first. jQuery 2.1.0.min.js. Then another script, and we're going to connect to the JavaScript version of the jQuery library. And you could save yourself a little effort by copying your file name from up here, but ending it in JS. Very important there. Be careful. I see people do this often. Uh, they're trying to save time by copying the name of this file like I recommended, but you also copy the CSS part, and that's not what we want. We're not connecting to JavaScript. We're accidentally connecting to CSS if you do that. So make sure it ends in .js, not .min. Dot CSS dot JS, just dot min dot JS. Okay, so I'm going to write a couple notes up here. The mobile friendly uh, meta tag. The jQuery mobile style sheet for basic fonts and colors. We're not going to document every single one of our lines, but I think it's very useful, especially as a beginner. And also, imagine if we were working as a team. We're not really going to do group projects. You're going to work on your own thing. But imagine that we were all together and that you were assigned to do one thing and you were assigned to do another. You should be communicating with each other, not, not only verbally, but giving each other notes in the code, giving a note to someone that don't forget to fix this or don't forget to add the 
the efficient line of code, you should be commenting code for yourself or for your team. And so if you feel comfortable not adding the lines of comments and such, that's fine. I won't be commenting every single thing, but I will be uh, remarking on, on things that might be useful. So therefore, probably our line numbers will not line up, and that's OK, as long as you find your general area here. So we say here first, uh, basic jQuery uh, library uh, to use other projects um, on top of. jQuery is often a very foundational library. We add it first in our code, and then other projects are built on top of it, like jQuery mobile and other things. And then lastly, jQuery mobile, um, Java, uh, JavaScript code with basic functionality. Basic mobile, f mobile optimized functionality. Now before we go further, let me show you a couple of useful things in our coding environment, um, Notepad++. Um, my code here so far, again, uh, what was the, anyone remember, what was the shortcut to zoom in and zoom out in our code in case you needed it? Control, control scroll wheel, yes, control mouse scroll wheel. Um, you can also press control plus and minus on the number pad on the, I can't pull it up here, but on the number pad on the on your right side of your keyboard, if you hold control and plus and minus, that's another way to zoom in and out. So sometimes it's a little hard to read, so you can zoom in and out. And um, control, scroll wheel. Well, another, another thing that could be useful is uh, the color coding. I said previously, yeah, we're going to have different colors and such, but it doesn't mean when something is red it doesn't mean it's wrong uh, but the the different colors do have a, a purpose you should be seeing that green is for comments blue is for tags black is often for human readable stuff red are like attributes uh, underline squiggly line um, often does mean like a misspelling but it gets confused because it's in quotes. It thinks it's a word, but it's not a word, so I wouldn't worry too much about the underlined squiggles. Um, but these are the basic, yeah, and like right here, I, I don't think I misspell colors unless it wants me to spell it the British way. Okay, I guess it does. Okay, well, fine. You can do that if you want. So um, the, this built-in color scheme is actually, I would say, one of the worst color schemes because when you're staring at your monitor and reading a lot of code, writing a lot of code, right here we've got bright white light shooting us in the face all of this time. And we can get easily fatigued by having so much bright light aimed at us. A lot of other code editors, perhaps, you might see them in a dark mode, where the colors are more dark and muted, and that's actually better for your eyesight. We can do that in Notepad++ as well. Let me show you where to change your color scheme. Go up to the Settings menu and go to Style Configurator. I don't think that's a real word, but that's where we want to go. The style configurator. And so here we've got select theme default. And I can jump over here to Bespin. And you see we get a darker color scheme. That, I think, is a lot better for coding. It's not so bright light shooting you in the face. It, it, the colors are still contrasty. I think the comments are a little bit harder to read because they're too close to the background color. You can go in and completely customize every single aspect of your code environment. But a lot of these built-in themes are really nice. The default one is the worst one. So I would recommend to choose any one of these other ones. I like using Blackboard a lot, but there's a lot of really good ones. Let's see, Ruby Blue is pleasant, uh, Vibrant Ink. So I'm going to keep it on default, just because this is actually then harder for you to see on my projector. Default is actually the best for you to see on my projector. 
Uh, but I would recommend if you put it on any one of these others, it's often going to be a lot easier uh, to read. There's even like this retro, like Vim, dark blue and stuff, cocky, mono industrial. Now I do have to say though, if you are going to be a serious programmer, you've got to choose Hello Kitty. <laughs> So you pick any of these themes that you like, and then click um, Save and Close. I'm going to keep it on default, Then you're going to need to remember to change it. Well, actually, this one's pretty bad as well. <laughs> you're going to need to change it every time you come into the room, because we have deep freeze on these computers. That Whenever you change anything on our computers, or save anything on our computers, everything erases, goes back to our factory settings for security purposes. So you'll remember to go back to your settings style configurator to change this every time you come in. And I'm going to leave it on default. Yeah, the mossy lawn is interesting, but I think the contrast is too low. Plastic code wrap. That's cool. So don't be afraid to zoom into your code, change your color scheme and such. Okay, so when I had the basic wireframe that we created here, we have these various screens that we want to set up. We've had the experience last time in creating screens for our project. We're going to start create diff creating different screens. We're going to do it in an efficient way now that we have sort of an idea of what to create. Before, before we go too much further, save your work and let's run it in a browser. Let's launch it in a browser. But actually, let's do this. Run it in Chrome so I can show you, so I can show everyone the same thing. We have a version of it in Firefox, but let me show you in Chrome first. Run the project in Chrome, press F12. Press F12 to open the developer's console. And um, I can see that in my case I have, I have seemed to have written it correctly because the font has changed to this one. The background is slightly gray. Uh, the text is close to the edge. Also, in your F12, in your developer's console, click console right there. If you have type if you have missed type something hopefully it will give you a console message saying you missed type something on line 7 we're going to use the console a lot as we get more advanced in javascript this will give us feedback line 12 is wrong what does this command do on line 6 the console here in f12 is going to be very useful it's slightly different in firefox but here's what it looks like in chrome you have a lot of errors. Okay. Let's take a quick look at that. We don't want to build errors on top of errors. Not too many. It's just Okay. Oh, what you need then is the images. Well. 
Okay, so um, we're going to get used to looking at that console, especially when we do a lot of JavaScript. What's also cool is that we have a very basic uh, phone simulator built into Chrome and Firefox. So right now, uh, we're kind of looking at our project as a website, but we can trick it into acting also like a mobile device. And you can do that in Chrome. I'll show you how to do it in Firefox in a moment. But in Chrome, you see there's an icon right here that looks like a couple of little devices, a phone and a tablet. That's the toggle device toolbar. If you click that, the screen changes a little bit over here, and it says we're in responsive mode. If you change this up here from responsive mode to an iPhone or an iPad or a Galaxy or whatever, this will behave a little bit more like a mobile device instead of a website. Question over here, ladies? Or ladies here? Any questions here? Yeah. Okay, remember to raise your hand. I'll be there one moment. So we can look at our project here sort of like a, uh, an iPhone screen, iPad screen, and so forth. So we're going to get used to this. I'm going to bring it back as we keep working. We want to keep practicing using the developer tool and the responsive. Question here? Let's go all the way down.
All right, so here we've got our project. All right, everyone, so we've got our project here uh, that we're looking inside of uh, Chrome. So we've got here our project that we're looking at it in Chrome. Ladies, do you still have an issue over here? Remember to raise your hand, Oh, 
All right, so let's continue here, and what I want to do is start to set up our different um, screens of our app. And we know that we're going to do, um, we're going to use jQuery Mobile to create different sections in our, in our project. I want to create sort of like a reusable template screen so that then I can just copy and paste the template to make new screens. Uh, so in our code, um, after, after that h1, before the, uh, before the JavaScript stuff, uh, we're going to create a new section that has a pair, and we'll call this, we'll say a comment here to say, start template screen. At the end of the section, I'll make another comment that says end template screen. The point of this as is I said we're going to have uh, 283 lines or so of HTML. And even though the color coding is useful, and even though tabbing is useful, it's going to look like a big wall of code when you browse it. By giving yourself this kind of comment, which is like a marker that shows what is in this section, what is in this block of code is our template screen. What is in this block of code is our login screen. What is in this block of code is our database screen. I think it's very helpful to give, to give these sorts of comments to ourselves that delineate the code for us. Of course, completely optional, but it is useful in navigating your code easier. Section, data role, attribute. When we make a whole screen full on the, in the app, what kind of data role does it use? page and it needs some sort of unique identifier which is what ID and we will call this template and I'm gonna call it all capital template to make it obvious that I need to change that later but the idea is I'm gonna create a basic screen structure which then I can copy and paste for each new screen that I use each screen is gonna have a header an article, a footer, right? Uh, almost every screen actually is going to have a um, an area at the top of the document, in the middle of the document, at the bottom. Um, we usually, at the very least, will always have an article. We may not, may or may not have a footer if we've got like a pop-up screen. A dialog box doesn't really need a footer. We may use a header or not again for design and such. But my login screen, I want a header and an article. My uh, my uh, switch user screen, I want a header and article and such. These then need to be upgraded with the data roles. Header is what? Header. Header. Footer is data role of footer. And the hard one to remember, anyone remember the article? Role. Main. And anything else? Class. UI. Content. That's the weird one. Everything else is a little obvious. Okay, the footer's got a data roll of footer, and the header's got a data roll of header, and the section's got a data roll of page, and nav bar is one slightly different. But article is the weird one. It's got a role, not a data roll, and it's got a class, not an ID. You just have to memorize that. <coughs> A 
Up on the header, we had a heading, h1. Right here, we'll just put template. That will, of course, change when it's the welcome screen, when it's the logout screen, when it's the save comic book screen. But this is in, in, in basic, it's got a, a uh, heading at the top there. The footer, we're using an h4. Again, we can put anything there, template. Eventually, that can have, you know, the copyright. It can have some sort of message. Maybe it can have, like, a quote of the day. We can program it to do many things. But just the basic structure is what we're setting up here. Inside of the article, we'll have an h2, and again, just template info with a paragraph. Just whatever content. We'll, we'll need to change this as we create the actual content. But do you see all of this is setting ourselves up for a complete skeleton to create the various screens? I don't want to over and over and then misspell. I don't want to over and over write this code for my welcome screen, logout screen, login screen. I, I can start off with this. If I wrote this properly, copying and pasting, then this will then be a time saver. If I wrote this wrong, then copying and pasting this will be a big mess. So we're going to test it in a moment. But when I go from the home screen to the save comic screen to the view comic screen remember in, in our uh, in our wireframe so we have a uh, home save view screens uh, how do we navigate from each of the between each of those how do we get between each of those screens buttons navbar buttons in a navbar so let's set up a little template for our navbar as well up in the header what was the tag to create a nav bar? Nav. What was the data role for the nav bar? I gave it away. Nav bar. Uh, this was an unordered list bullet points now we're doing everything very generically but on this one we we will do it we already kind of know or I I, I know uh, how I want these screens to, to work so on this one uh, I'm not gonna do it completely as a generic template. We will have a home button in the um, nav bar. We will have a save comic screen and a view comic screen. Save comic, view comics. While I'm here, I'm going to set up the template so that it will connect to these screens. But these screens won't exist yet, so they'll be broken links. But once we start to fill in these screens, the link will work. 
so here we're going to have an A tag for an active link connecting href to some screen that has a pound home ID. There is no section with an ID of home yet. There is no section with an ID of save comic yet. Now I will here use a capital letter to be able to read both of the words. You can put it all lowercase if you want, but this is very common practice to do when there are uh, when there I when there are IDs or classes or functions and such that have more than one word in the command, so to speak. Uh, there is uh, intercaps. There's capitalization inside of the word. Uh, you just have to um, remember how you spelled it or keep it all lowercase if you want, but then I think it's a lot harder to read if we kept it like that save comic. It's a little hard to read. So usually the practice is to capitalize the second and subsequent words. So if it was save my comic, it would have been save lowercase my capital M comic capital C. And then lastly, for the view comics button, that's got an A tag. It's an active link, href, hypertext reference to somewhere. The somewhere is a, is a page with an ID of view comics. These pages don't exist yet. These are gonna, these are gonna be broken links. That's fine. We're gonna get there. Let me just see what mine looks like so far, just to confirm that. I'm going to run it in a browser. Okay, getting there. So this generic template that I'm going to reuse for different screens. Header, article, footer. We need to make sure the footer gets stuck to the bottom of the screen. Uh, what, what do we do there to make sure it gets stuck to the bottom of the screen? Data position. Data position. Fixed. Now, I currently have the Notepad++ software set up in a way that perhaps is a little harder to code with on purpose. If you use other coding software, perhaps like Brackets, it automatically completes some of the code for you, doesn't it? Notepad++ can do that as well, but I have it turned off for the moment just to get into the practice of writing the complete code. It is very useful to have autocomplete. But perhaps when you're first learning something, you don't want it to do it for you too soon. So I will uh, show us a little later how to do autocomplete, meaning that I open the tag and it'll close it for me. I don't have to remember to close it. I'll start this tag, it'll close the tag. I start the quote, it'll close the quote. I know for a lot of us, perhaps in the beginning, we, we're forgetting to close our tags. Good. Keep practicing to not forget. And then I'll show you the autocomplete so that it does it for you after you have the experience. I would recommend also, it might not make sense at the moment, but let's also add the data position fixed to the header. Because technically, if you've got a lot of content in the article and you scroll up, that header is going to scroll away. You're going to scroll. There's going to be header and footer at the top and bottom. We've set footer fixed always at the bottom. When we scroll up, the header is going to scroll away. Let's fix it to the top so that it's always at the top. Same way. Header, data roll header, data position fixed. So that that header does not scroll away when we scroll up. Run it in, in Chrome or Firefox to see the result. Firefox also has that little uh, responsive and, and uh, mobile device emulator. 
when you can press F12 on, on Firefox as well. There's also a little button for it to behave like a, like a device. I'll show you that in a moment. Um, the version of Internet Explorer that we have here I don't believe has that. So it's either Chrome or Firefox. But I'm going to run this in Firefox. I'm going to press F12. Firefox also is going to have their console down at the bottom. But if you want to move it to the right, you have this icon here, dock it to the right. And in Firefox, you have this icon here, turn on device simulator. So I'm going to dock to the side, and then I'm going to turn on the responsive design mode. And then this is going to sort of look like also a device. And you can go here and say, well, make it look like a, like a Nexus 7. Make it look like a Samsung S5. Rotate it. So Chrome has that. Firefox has it. Newer versions of Internet Explorer of Edge have that. Um, Safari has that. A way to test as a mobile device. So this is what we should see here. Let's pause here. Uh, you want to make sure you've got your template at the top. You've got these buttons here. We'll put icons better later. Some text down at the footer down here. If you look at it in Chrome, looks like that. Let's pause right there. Anyone need a little help? Does everyone see it something like this? Question. Very good question. Anyone have an idea? We wrote CBDB in H1 line 12, but I don't see it anywhere. Why, why do you think maybe? It's not in a page. It exists outside of a section. Therefore, it doesn't show it in a section. Now, it's still going to be there. Actually, when you move from, from home screen to about screen or whatever, you're going to see it for a moment. It's going to be behind the scenes like a ghost. So we actually don't want this at all. We're going to delete it in a moment. But good eye. Where did that go? Well, it's not in a section, so it doesn't show up. But it's going to float around there and behind the scenes if, you don't, if you're not careful with it. So I'm going to delete it. Anyone else? Does your code look OK like we expect over here? Anyone need a little help? It should look something like this. So we'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break. Uh, based on this template, I want to create the very first screen, the welcome screen, not the splash screen. We actually create that in a different way. We want to create the welcome screen. Um, the welcome screen was my uh, was my uh, in my wireframe here. The welcome screen was the screen where a person picks register if you're a new user or log in if you're an existing user. So based on our template. I want to create this first welcome screen, which then people can go here or here. So the way we will do this is we've got a complete section where we need to fill in the details. We've got a section with its data role and the header and the article and everything. Based on that, we can copy and paste and change things up a little bit to create the welcome screen. The order of this does matter. So the first thing that I want to show people is the welcome screen. Therefore, we need to copy the template and paste it above itself, before itself. This template screen is always going to be the last thing in our code. I've copied it and I've pasted it above itself. Now I'm going to change the details. Start welcome screen and welcome screen section data role page ID welcome h1 welcome I'm gonna change some of these details so once you've copied your template screen this is now the start of the welcome screen There is the end of the welcome screen.
section data role is a page ID is welcome actually PG welcome uh, all of our pages are gonna have IDs of page PG welcome a page of the welcome section PG home which uh, actually that's a mistake sorry PG home PG save PG view uh, we'll fix that in a moment um, section here of PG welcome we, we don't even need a nav bar on the welcome screen we're gonna have it very simple it's gonna say welcome to the app here's a picture of spider-man log in or sign up so we don't need a complex nav bar I'm gonna remove the nav bar nav bar we do need a header it's fixed at the top h1 will say the name of the app so in this first section that will be visible PG welcome we have a header no navbar we have an article we can say welcome uh, paragraph we'll remove that for the moment and also uh, I don't I don't need a footer at the moment remove the footer completely when the app loads at the moment we will see this PG welcome we will not see the template because it's second we're gonna see the name of the app at the top welcome message in the middle we'll program more of that in a moment when I see the result in the browser I should only see welcome there's no way to go past this yet I shouldn't see the template I should not see the template because the template in the order is second so I don't see it until I get past PG welcome but this is where it is at the moment a welcome screen where you can log in or sign up save that uh, we'll pause for uh, our next break it's about 755 we'll take a break until 805 if your code isn't quite working we'll pause for, to get some help if it's working take a little break uh, I, uh, I'll, I'll help you if you need it we'll be back in 10 minutes at 805 question